it's now time to discuss a film directed by a man in his 80s. Is that correct? James Benning, yeah. James 80 Benning. this year. Happy birthday, James. Uh, happy birthday to James Benning. He's here in the festival. He's not only uh, introduced his film, he's Alan's in parties. Worth, he's also, um, do, uh, he's, <laughs> he's also uh, asking questions at Q&As, uh, I'm, so I'm told. Um, Alan's Worth is his new film, hot mm. on the heels of his uh, second film called United States of America. Yeah. Um, we all saw it at various points. Um, George, would you like to describe briefly what this hour-long uh, structural film is? Yes. So um, we we were fortunate enough to see it with Benning present, and he uh, at the outset he explained to us, "Look, this is a mystery." Um, and afterwards, I'm, I, I'd like you to uh, kind of Google and uh, piece it all together. Mm -hmm. uh, but then afterwards, in the Q and A, he um, he did sort of uh, demystify it somewhat. So Allensworth itself is a community in California. Which Southern was California, yeah. in Southern California, which was the uh, first settlement on American soil um, uh, established by African Americans, and which was built and solely inhabited, uh, and then it was destroyed. And here, I'm not so sure of the details. I think there was a, a lynching. I, I so I believe that sometime after uh, summer around the 1920s. Uh, at least 1926, there was a lynching or a burning or an event that led to a lot of these buildings either being damaged or uh, left abandoned, so they decayed into a state of disrepair. Right. That's what I believe. And then in the 50s, they're reconstructed, mm -hmm. uh, and the settlement is reconstructed. Complete sim sim simulacra of the original buildings. Exactly. Like down and so this was of, once quite yeah. a populous community, um, and the, uh, the girl who tried to access the, um, uh, the school during the Jim Crow separation, uh, which then... That's the Little Rock, Arkansas. A little, in yeah. Little Rock, Arkansas, yeah, which then set off big. the um, uh, Brown versus the Board of Education bill, which everyone will remember from civil rights history is, is part of the process of ending Jim Crow. Um, she came from uh, Allensworth. So there is this, and then there's Benning's personal connection to it. So ben, Benning uh, <coughs> had, I think, the... Um, and the honesty <laughs> that you get as being an 80-year-old mm -hmm. 80-year-old wizened um, former member of Crazy Horse. No, I, I mean, this is just what he looks like. Yeah. Uh, to say, look, I, I came of age in, uh, in a segregated community mm -hmm. where everyone was profoundly racist, including myself. Um, and I subsequently built a shack, not unlike those that you see in the film in Allensworth, uh, nearby, and then I became interested in the community, and now has 531 people. I found out via Wikipedia. Yeah, it's um, a small community. Yeah. Can I can I just so interject? That, that, that's, that's enough okay. context. I think. Can I just yeah. interject and just describe the the viewing experience? Absolutely. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's an hour long, and it divides into divides pretty neatly into twelve uh, twelve sections, each of five minutes. Each are still shot, uh, shot on digital. Um, Almost all the shots are exterior landscapes which center a a building, one of these buildings that's been reconstructed. Um, a couple of the shots have um, a piece of, they, they all have a sort of atmos uh, from the um, this still shot. It's very much in the style of his other structural films, just a still shot. Life goes on, often very vaguely in the distance a train might pass by or you might see the reflection of a train in the window. Um, it's, it appears as if he's picked bits parts of this town that are especially not busy but they're not totally deserted either yeah. um there are some shots where uh he's chosen uh pieces of music um songs that relate to black uh, songs that have black in the title relate to black girls or uh, a nina simone song that describes uh black bird not being able to fly uh, and then in august because they're all they're all um month each each of the 12 installments is of, of a month uh, in this, in presumably filmed in a particular month, over this, a year, uh, this actually, last yeah. year, yeah. And the August instalment uh, has a young girl, a young black girl, reading um, poetry uh, from, by someone else. Um, by Lucille Clifton, Lucille yeah, Clifton, from the kind of sixties, basically. It's yeah, racial uh, poetry themed around being a black woman. But uh, the, the the one, I mean, one of the 
uh, parts of significance here, apart from the fact that it's the only human we see on screen. Mm-hmm. Um, is, well, is, in, is, in, is, in the sort of in the center, there are humans kind of hovering. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah true. We'll get to that. There are signs. There are mm-hmm. many signs of human inhabitation, mm-hmm. but the only uh, mm-hmm. kind of mid shot um, is this refrain that she uh, returns to again and again. Uh, from one of the poems in the inner city or as we call it home Mm -hmm. Um, Mm. and because we're what we're sort of seeing here i mean you can place it within one of these lost futures uh films right yeah um not one of these like landscapes of resistance style you you know Mm -hmm. that genre because uh after the end of Jim Crow, you see a flight um, of urbanization in, mm-hmm. and a reghettoization within. Yeah, uh, and then you get, obviously, the, the the King riots in, in um, LA in the 70s, I think. But but just context aside, do, do, uh, did you... Well, can I talk... Can I, yeah, let, yeah. Me, let me talk a bit about space, right, a little yeah. bit about presence and, and, and human habitation. And I think one of the interesting things with Benning is... is so I'll, I'll, I'll refer to what he said in his Q&A and what he said in his introduction. So he said there are, in the film, there are five clues which are really red herrings hidden mm-hmm. within the film so that's one thing and i think that's benning being generous he said that at the beginning i think that's he's aware that his films are require concentration and contemplation and they're reflective experiences and, and not mm-hmm. necessarily they're not necessarily showing you he's not necessarily showing you the thing you're looking at he's showing you something else and the red herrings are really designed to help you reach that other place um and i think with the shots, yeah, there are intrusions and uh, eruptions. So obviously he shoots um, for a time and a day. He's, he claims he only took 12 shots. So he's obviously probably chopped them down to these five He's minutes. humble bragging. He's humble bragging. I believe him. But the so question there was is, a process for him where he was yeah. like, I will not press record and stop. Yeah, he's not waiting for something necessarily exciting to mm-hmm. happen. May, I think is he's kind of seeing, mm-hmm. looking at the long edit for each shot and then mm-hmm. picking out a moment that's particularly resonant. So that might be the arrival of a train or a reflection or a car passing. And I think mm-hmm. these things are interesting because they tell us about a community that has been, as it were, in many ways, intentionally separated mm-hmm. from history because it was created, it was founded by the pa- pastor, Allensworth, who, and it was created as a space that would be at some sit outside in, in judicial terms or kind of local government and community terms outside of Jim Crow laws because it would be self-management self within yeah. White America. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So there's this separation and there's a later historical separation which I think for James Benning is the fact that Allensworth has really faded from memory as this, this site of kind of utopian imagination. Um, and he said, you know, one of the interesting things is that the train track was moved. It had a train station and the train was moved about a mile or two away. Right, so it can no longer even be visited. It can't service this mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. place anymore. So, but you see these trains. So these trains are kind of, I suppose, references to the idea that it's still part of America, but it's kind of det- detached from America in a lot of ways and particularly from the memory of it. Um, and I think, yeah, so in terms of his composition, you get these um, sound is very important to him. Um and you're supposed to kind of absorb and look into this place, uh, which might be a building, the side of a building, a house. Um, and I think there's a, uh, a similarity with like the photography of Luigi Giri or people like this. And there's, you know, I, I think we were discussing the other night, and the name Ansel Adams kind of came up as well. And I think or Eggleston also. Eggleston, I think. Yeah. yeah. So I think there is a sense of you're required to do profound looking. And I always find with James Benning, they are always very moving experiences at a festival to see one of these films on a big screen. Actually, somebody said this in the Q&A that he, he found it a sort of uh, a bit of R&R because every mm, year Benning yeah. shows up with a film. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it's always a heater. And yeah, and you, you, you often... a salve as well. And you will, mm. have, you will have seen any number of pseudo Bennings mm. who think that... Many uh, such cases. Who, who, who mm. won't have, let's say, the structural... Um, under, underpinnings or mm. the structural integrity but we'll think that if they just put the tripod in there mm. and let, the, less, yeah, let you, the rest run the same effect will occur <laughs> yeah I, I, I think that the, yeah I, the um I, I saw just to say i saw it without any of this context without before or after mm. um and i, I you, you with regards to the um the town the reconstruction the lynching thing um, to quote uh, President Trump, you're telling me this now for the first time. <laughs> um, but uh, I did, I did, I didn't write any notes except this uh, graph. I did, I did write a sort of a sine wave graph, mm. which was kind of my little um, record of uh, context and specificity. Um, or Interesting. Maybe not so much specificity, but but like context and uh, explicit politics, right? Uh, seeping in and then being fully 
uh, almost like an eclipse or something like fully mm. being a bit like you know uh, almost like Hollis Frampton's lemon you know when the, the object becomes yeah, clear yeah, and then because there's a rotation like, like yeah, there's a there's a rotation as the season goes around the, money the year shot. goes around you you find these things you find you start to realize that it might have something to do with race this film with the Nina Simone song referring to the black mm. bird um and then all of a sudden you're you're literally watching a black woman uh, re- uh, reading out poetry about blackness and racism um i i think i think i probably would have preferred the film without it going um uh flying so close to the sun but i i i admired the way in which this this was structurally thought out um we don't have much more time to discuss this but i just want to yeah. get from both of you your feeling about whether or not that a journey worked yes I, I think it did work i think that the uh you cannot separate benning Bernie's like aesthetic and filmic project from politics like i think he's never made any you know his last film even united states of america was a state of the nation address to america and contemporary politics there's no harm like in the same way Farocchi and petzold make films about Ger- germany's present i think for the same reasons it works in their way and maybe atf fails and fubs because she mishandles the goods she fumbles the bag benning i think is one of the best uh, articulators of this vision because even when it is on the nose like the poetry reading it it is still tethered to a very a, a structural imprimatur that he has developed um, and I think yeah maybe maybe the reading is quite on the nose for him but also not I think it's it's very consistent with his idea of he's not showing you exactly what he's showing you um, okay. he's not showing us a person talking about black experience I mean he is showing us that but he's also pointing towards the level of mediation is there right Still. yeah and uh, we, we don't know whether or not the school girl is familiar with the poet well this herself, or whether you know whether it's something on the syllabus she's reading it because it's she's shown not. within exactly it's shown within yeah. the yeah exactly no true he told you remember her, he yeah. said he gave her the the book for the, for the first, first time, time and yeah. she read it so the interesting thing was during the Q&A the word he used three times was confrontation to describe so he said there's a confrontation between her and this woman this girl because he handed the book didn't tell her anything about it um and there's an n-word in there and he said he was aware of the the power dynamic of a, a black woman reading to a white man with a camera and to say the n-word she paused and skipped the word and he found that really interesting i find that quite interesting um the dynamic and he saw that as a confrontation he thinks the film is a confrontation um so it, despite having you know on the superficially uh benning is a passive observer he's really not that he's a participant observer in the landscapes and the spaces that he 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 brings to life i think so confrontation is an interesting and i just want to yeah and i want to say that um as as with the frauds who have experienced last year and seeing united states of Mm. america the affirmation that uh i mean benning has now made into this maybe is one of his 30th films or it's in he's in his 30s i think but yeah he must be 30s or 40s um and and is is enormously more diverse than just this long iterative uh late style of 10 skies 10 cigarettes 20 cigarettes etc mm. um his 80s work in particular but it's uh it really does feel like the iteration and the finessing of um uh a painterly mode and um a poise and a grace and an understanding of filmic vernacular which is that of really being in the presence of like uh someone with control over what they're doing 